uh, here we are, part two of my Let's Play of Cinderella Phenomenon. Last time, my doll came to life and did some creepy singing and magic-y stuff, and I gotta know what happens next. So, let's get cracking. Continue. My save. Hmm. Hey! Wake up, girl. Huh? Where am I? Ow, my head! You have some nerve sleeping in front of my shop. Leave before a customer sees you. I was in my room. How am I here? Ooh, look at that costume change. Did you not hear what I said, you filthy child? Filthy? You would speak to your own crown princess in such a manner. If you're the crown princess, then I'm the queen. You must have been knocked on the head quite hard to have such grand delusions. I am not delusional. I am April Riella Britton, blood daughter of King Gennaro Britton III and the crown princess of Angiel. Right. The king never had a daughter with that witch. Is she referring to mother? My mother was totally a witch. That's totally what it is. Which? Don't pretend to be stupid, girl. I can only stare at her, puzzled. Our go good king only has stepchildren. Princess Emmeline and Prince Rod. And you are most definitely neither of them. What? Now get gone before you go spouting your crazy gibberish at my customers and scare them away. The huff she leaves me to my own rapidly turning thoughts. I quickly realize that I am wearing tattered clothes and that I do not even have shoes on. <gasps> no. No, no. This cannot be happening. Something shines against my chest and I reach up to grab it. Oh, a, a glass slipper necklace. This is... It all floods back. Delora being a witch. Cinderella's glass slipper. This is not a dream. Delora gave me the fairy tale curse. My hands begin to tremble. I must return to the palace and speak with the king. Run, 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 run. Let me in. Sorry, girl, but this place is off limits to uninvited guests. You do not understand. I am Crown Princess April Riella Britton. I must speak with my father. As loath as I am to call him that, I have to. <laughs> He is your father. Why would you be loath to call him that? No one will believe me if I am addressing him by title. You best leave now, nice and quiet, before we have to force you. If you would only... Make way for the king! Oh, here he comes. The gates swing open and three horses trot out. Soldiers ride two of the horses while the last horse is a different, familiar rider. Father! I immediately moved to block the path of his horse. The soldiers moved to hold me back. Your Majesty, what is this? Your Majesty, this, claim, this girl is claiming to be your daughter. Daughter? Both of my stepchildren are in the palace right now. What? Even father is a part of this. Father, you must help me. A witch has cursed me. For once in your life, just help. Once. For once in your life, just once. Help me. You must believe me. Tell me, where is your family, child? Why are you all alone? He looks at me with pity in his eyes. He is looking at me more kindly as a peasant than he ever did when I was the crown princess and his daughter. I recoil. You must be hungry. Take this. should feed your family for a day or two. The kingdom offers work opportunities for those who need them. Please let your parents know. I do not want your pity. Father. How old is she? I thought she was like at least a young adult. I know they've mentioned 17, but why do they keep calling me a child? Please escort this girl back to her home. Make sure she gets there safely. At once, your majesty. 
I watch as my father and his two guards ride away on their horses, leaving me to stand in their dust. He left me alone. Again. Aww. Where is your home, girl? There is nowhere left for me to go. Father has forgotten me. Leave me. Now look here. Our orders were to leave me alone. So yourself. Can't say we didn't try. This is so, probably so crazy for her. Don't cause any more scenes, little girl. Little girl. There we go. I watch with bleary eyes as the soldiers return to the palace. How can this be happening? I stare at the small pouch in my hands. I do not know what hurts more. The fact that I have just been unceremoniously paraded away from my home like I am nothing more than a piece of garbage. Or the fact that my own father does not recognize me. Ooh, look at that girl's hideous dress. How difficult it is to be poor. Ah, don't rub it in. I clutch the pou pouch closer to my chest as I run into an empty alley. I huddle in a corner, trying to become as small as possible. I squeeze my eyes shut, hoping that when I next open them, everything will be back to normal. A dream. No matter what happens, you must not leave the palace. Why? The world is cruel. People will only ever hurt you. But they're always so nice to me. That is only because you are the crown princess. They will only ever think of what they can take from you. I am trying to protect you, my love. That is why you must never leave the palace. Never leave, mother. I am the only one who will ever love you so much. Do you understand? I understand. Yeah, my mom doesn't necessarily have the best intentions for me, I don't think. Chapter One, The Marching. Oh. When I open my eyes, I am still on the streets. I must have fallen asleep. But the nightmare continues. I am cold in my rags. I hold myself for warmth, wheeling some of the cold away, but fail. My feet are numb and in pain caked in a dirt that I have gathered from walking barefoot around town. Well, there's a frightful sight. Beggar probably thought she could try her luck with the nobility that live around here. Ah, just look how ragged she looks. Rude! Same two ladies, so rude. Ah, oh, what are you looking at? At two women that lack the basic manners of a noble upbringing. Silence, girl. Don't you know who you're talking to? No, and I don't care. <gasps> what nerve. Yeah. Let's just go. There's no reason to stoop to a commoner's level. Yeah, well, you know what? Your hearts are common, you little gross people. Yeah. I will remember you. And once I break this curse, I will make you regret your words. I become acutely aware of the fact that I've not eaten anything for almost a day. I've been sitting here, thinking on the new mess that is my life. But moping around will not break my curse. Crying will not help either. I should find that witch first, but, but how? I have no idea where she is. Delora, I swear I will make you regret doing this to me. When I find you, I... <sighs> I will find food first. A little pouch. Is this all the king thinks I am worth? Leave, girl. A dirty peasant like you has no place in this restaurant. But why? I can pay. Find another place. You're scaring away my customers. Am I not a customer? Shoot, there's nothing for you here. You just swatted me away like a fly. The nerve. Sensing that this will get me nowhere, I ball my hands into fists and walk away. I get the same treatment at the next three restaurants I try. I'm treated as something less than dirt, like my money has no real value. I am the crown princess. They have no right to turn me away like this. I've been eating stale bread, anything to keep the hunger at bay. The bread barely helps. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a small bakery. There are croissants on display that make my 
mouth water. Slowly I begin to make my way over there. Uh, ow! My feet ache with every step. They look and feel even worse than before. If only I had enough coins for a pair of shoes. But food is more important. If the rags I am wearing and the pouch of money are all that I have, then I need to prioritize. And I will die before I beg. Two croissants. You need to pay, girl. There are no free handouts here. I, I take a point coin from my pouch and I hand it to her. This should be more than enough. The shop owner stares at the coin before reluctantly taking it. She hands me two croissants and a paper bag. I will not ask where you got those coins. Ugh. Are you implying that I stole them? How else would a beggar like you get that amount of coin? Now be off with you, child. I won't have you scaring away any other customers. Without another word, I turn and start to walk away from the woman. So this is the goodness of the people of Angiel. Yeah, they seem pretty jerky to me. I take a bite out of one of the croissants, cringing a little at the dryness. Hey, girl. What now? We saw you at that shop. Want to share how you got your coins there? Excuse me. Oh, look at her, brushing us off like she's royalty or something. No means no! Let me go. You ain't no better than us. Now be a good girl and hand over that pouch. The man on the left grabs at my pouch and attempts to yank it away from me. I will not let these brutes take anything from me. I elbow the man in the stomach, then aim a kick at the other man's shin. I have an opening and I take it. What? I pull myself free and begin to run as fast as I can. Hey! Where do I go? I'm not familiar with the streets at all. It's highly likely that I'm just gonna hit, hit a dead end. Where should I go? Um... Never take the first option. Go right. Oh, gosh. Oh, the choices begin. Hey! This way! You're... No time to talk, princess. How do you know who I am? There's another one. Stop running, you two. <sighs> Come on. The boy grabs my wrist and pulls me after him. He takes off with a sudden burst of speed, and then I am running even faster than I just was. I'm not entirely convinced following him is a good idea, but at least the boy seems to have a better sense of direction than me. Ow. Our running causes rocks in the pathway to come loose, and before I notice them in my path, I step down hard on them. A sharp pain shoots up my foot, and I collapse to the ground. It hurts. Princess! Wait, he knows I'm a princess. I try to stand, but the pain in my feet is unbearable. I fall back down into the dirt with a gasp. I can't. We got you now. Just hand over your coins and neither of you will get hurt. No, they're all I have. I won't let you touch her. Ha, says the little boy. Well, well, well. What is this ghastly sight before me? Two adults threatening a child and a lady. How very ungentlemanly. Where's the likes of you? What are the likes of you even doing around this neighborhood? You asking to get fleeced? Asking? Perhaps I am in the mood for a scuffle. Ooh. Ooh, I like him. The nobleman brandishes his sword, his expression confident, maybe even cocky. Show me what you got, sirs. And please, don't bore me. Oh, I would never bore you. Who are these people? I ain't dealing with this for the money. He's got a sword. What? Come back here, you coward. The two of us can take him. I think your friend has the right idea. I'm not the type to show mercy. <gasps> This is way too much trouble for a little gold. Ooh! You're late. Sorry, kid. You know how hard it is for me to be invisible around here. Wait, what did you just call me? At ease, small one. These two know each other. I, I don't even know what's going on anymore. I feel ill. My head is pounding and my feet feel simultaneously like they are frozen and on fire. My stomach rumbles, the hunger coming back with a vengeance. My body feels light. H hey, princess! 
princess! How do they know I'm a princess? Calm down. Parfait will be able to help her. But for now, we need to move. Before anyone else sees us. Yeah. Don't worry. You're safe now. Oh, a diamond on the side. Huh. Everything is... fading. A dream? What is that in your hands, April? I... it was hurt. I just wanted to help it, but... it died. It's all my fault. No, it's not your fault, my love. It died because it was weak. But... Ooh. This is the world, April. Only the strong survive. The weak get cast aside to die. You are not weak. You are strong, my crown princess, and you do not cry. Now wipe your tears. I do not want to see you cry again. Do you understand? Yes. Now get rid of that thing and wash your hands. She is cruel. Did you not hear me, child? Y yes mother. Oh my god. Oh, you're awake. Where am I? Uh, uh well, um this isn't my room. Oh, my hand flies to my chest where the little glass slipper hangs from my neck. Oh. Still here. Are you okay, miss? This girl is the maid that tore Dolores' dress. The one I fired for her clumsiness. Miss? To think that I would meet her again, here, like this. Her eyes are red. <laughs> um, leave me alone. Right, of course. Um, here's some sal- salve I made for you. It'll help with the pain. thought at all, have you, Ice Princess? <laughs> you! Oh my gosh! It's Dolora! Suddenly there she is. Dolora stands before me with a snide smile, looking happy with herself. She is the cause of everything I have been through. All the pain, heartache, and hunger. It is her fault. I try to stand, thinking to give the witch a piece of my mind, but as soon as my feet touch the floor, pain shoots up my legs. I end up falling back to the bed. Ow. You should be more grateful to the girl you just scared away. She's been taking care of you for the past two days. Two days? I've been passed out for two days. I am suddenly vibrating with anger. Remove the curse. Now. Ha. Huh. Do you think you can just command me to remove the curse and your best princess voice? What do you want? Gold? What I want is worth more than all the gold you could summon in Angiel, princess. Besides, haven't you read your fairy tales? The caster cannot take the curse back. You need to focus on breaking the curse yourself if you want your life back. Mother burned the books before I could read more than one or two of them. I do not think either involved curses, just Janie's and trading away your voice for legs. Ah! Aladdin and the Little Mermaid. <laughs> ah, it's good you're awake, princess. Parfait, should you really be up and about? Don't fuss, I'm feeling much better. Are you a witch as well? Oh no, my name is Parfait and I'm a fairy. What a silly name for a fairy. I want to eat a Parfait. Huh. I mean, not literally. Like, that would be gross, but... <laughs> a witch and a fairy in one room. Being friendly with one another, impossible. Oh, look at her face. You weren't expecting that at all, were you, princess? What is going on? I'm sure you have many questions, princess. Yeah, I do. Yeah, first off, how do you know that I'm the princess? Don't be silly. She's a fairy. Of course she knows. I promise we'll do, your, do our best to answer your questions. I, I don't even know where to start. What would you like to know? Yeah, okay. Why was I cursed? 
seriously? You're gonna ask that? Well, okay, I have to. I want to know what you're gonna say. I wouldn't have asked if I knew the answer. Plus, she wouldn't know the answer. You have such a temper on you. Well, very well. This one's got a simple answer. It's because you're a cold-hearted, cruel, wicked princess who deserves to be punished. Woo! Rough! Delora! A curse is the only way to force you to change your horrid ways. Delora, you could have put that more nicely. I'm pretty sure I was already being that. No, you were not! Change? Why do I need to change? Are you completely unaware of how heartless you are to other people? The coldness you show to your stepfamily and your father? The way you treat Princess and Elaine? Why would they need to be treated any differently? You need to prove that you have some goodness in you, Princess. Some smidge of kindness. Why? People only show you kindness when they want something from you. The instant they get what they want, they'll just throw you away. Oh, what else would you like to know? Well, no wonder she acts like she does. I like that I'm getting some explanations. How do I break the curse? The necklace you've got is one of Cinderella's glass slippers. Wow, that must be a big necklace. <laughs> to break the curse, you must get the second slipper. Complete the pair. And how do I do that? By doing three good deeds. What? It's a very easy thing to do. At least for someone who knows how to be good. Three good deeds? What does that even mean? I wouldn't even know where to start. Take heart, princess. Goodness is innate in everyone. Are you sure that's the case with this one? Delora, you are not helping. I'm a witch, and I think I have more goodness in my big toe than she has in her entire body. I mean, I, you might not be wrong. <laughs> now you're just being mean. For every good deed you accomplish, you will get a piece of the glass slipper. When you've gotten all three, you'll complete the pair and the curse will break. Simple. I, suge I suggest you start by polishing that attitude of yours. What else would you like to know? Well, what happens if I don't break the curse? I think you know the answer to that one already, princess. Oh, oh I guess I'll just stay a commoner forever then. What else would you like to know? Why are you two working together? Yeah! To answer that, we'll have to give you a bit of a history lesson. Oh, I've got this. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. Dramatics aside, there is one crystal in the kingdom called the Crystal Lucis. It is powered by happiness and love. The other is the Crystal of Tenebrarum, powered by fear and anger. The strongest of the witches is the Tenebrarum Bearer. The strongest of the fairies is the Lucis Bearer. Parfait is the Lucis Bearer. I take in Parfait's frail and sickly appearance. She is the strongest fairy? Oh no, are all the fairies just like super weak? The great war greatly damaged me. My powers are a fraction of what they used to be. And with no child, I have no successor to my burden. What does a bearer do? The bearers regulate the energy of the crystals and keep the balance between darkness and light. For centuries, the fairies and witches lived in harmony with the humans of the kingdom. Until a certain human decided to be a pest. Who was he? I knew of Miss Hans Gabriel Grimm. He wrote the fairy tales. Ooh. Interesting. And he started the feud between the witches and the fairies in the process. So, building on that, does that mean that, like, Grimm's fairy tales from our world are the same as the Grimm's fairy tales in their world? Like, is this world... Like, I IRL canon. Um, and maybe we've all forgotten or it's been walled off somehow from our current reality. Or are we going to experience the... I mean, I'm not expecting that. This is going a little deep for um, this kind of fantasy game. But, like, are we going to experience the downfall that means that we aren't... Or maybe... Did Grimm's fairy tales in our world come through some kind of portal? 
just speculation. <laughs> and he started the feud between witches and fairies in the process. How could a single person have so much power? It was the power of his words. In Grimm's stories, the witches were always evil. The humans naturally grew to fe fear and hate them. They began to hunt them. Didn't the witches fight back? We weren't allowed to use our powers to cause harm. But that all changed when the Tenebrarum Bearer decided revenge was more important than our promise. The witches took over the kingdom. They created the fairy tale curse to spread even more sadness and anger, to fill the human heart with negative emotions, all to fuel the power of the Tenebrarum. The delicate balance of harmony between the crystals was broken. The witches in the Tenebrarum grew far stronger than they were ever meant to be. We had no choice but to fight. And then the Great War happened. The Tenebrarum Bearer was eventually defeated. The Great War had, was ended with the help of an unexpected ally, but... Unexpected ally? Many lives were lost. My father, maybe? Or my mom? The good witches suffered horribly. We still have to stay hidden in hopes of having any kind of peace. Are you trying to make me believe that there are good witches? The Tenebrarum can poison a heart and mind into darkness and cruelty. The witches put themselves at risk in working with the Tenebrarum, in maintaining harmony. Some inevitably are corrupted. Many good witches were corrupted during the war. Most remain that way. Oh, can I save them? Many do not believe it, but the witches can be just as kind as fairies. And yet, it wasn't a fairy that cursed me. I've done good by cursing you, princess. You'll thank me when you've broken it. I will! Character development! Gung ho! <laughs> Dolora was not corrupted by the Tenebrarum. She is as good as they come. Hopefully you'll come to see that for yourself. Yes, please, can we be friends? I doubt it. Apart from my own inherent goodness, Parfait and I are working together because we have a common goal. Which is... To restore the balance between darkness and light. Three good deeds and I get my life back. Easier said than done. You said Cinderella, didn't you? Didn't she just go to a ball and find a prince? What does doing good have to do with that? Going to a ball, finding a prince. It's all so old-fashioned. No fun in that. Yeah! Cinderella is a girl with a pure heart. Yes! I, I'm not gonna just go find a man. I'm gonna improve myself. Woo! Cinderella is a girl with a pure heart. She was always willing to help others, even when they were cruel to her. Anyway, I have brought some clothes for you. I'll leave them on the table. We'll be waiting outside. There's some people I'd like you to meet. <sighs> I cannot believe this. I look down at my neatly bandaged feet. I have to admit that while sore, they are nowhere near as painful as they had been two days before. Here's some salve for me for you. It'll help with the pain. Why would she even care? I was the reason she lost her job at the palace. Oh, she probably doesn't remember me as the princess. But still, she has no reason to do such good things for me. I ignore the cell for the moment being and gingerly stand up, testing my feet for pain. The injury is definitely healing. I slowly walk over to the table and change into the clothes that have been left there. The dress is nowhere near as luxurious as the ones I wear in the palace, but Still, it is far improved from my rags. Aw, costume change! It's adorable! All my life, I've never had to lift a finger. And now? I will not let them see how much they've rattled me. I refuse to break. Just watch me. I will free myself from this curse. Oh, here we are. What is this place? Oh, I like the song. There are several people in the room chatting amiably with each other. I notice the girl that left me the salve by the counter, serving drinks. 
But as soon as the people in the room notice me, the room falls into immediate silence. Oh. Well, look what we have here. The Ice Princess herself, they all remember me. Huh? They know who I am? Yeah. I didn't think it was true. Curse for her cold-heartedness. As to be expected. You remember who I am, and yet you still treat me like this? Well, you aren't really a princess anymore, are you? You're one of us now, girl. Huh. Everyone, please. You shouldn't be treating a newcomer like this. Princess, let me apologize. They mean no offense. I cannot believe that. Not when the people Parfait is referring to simply smirk and shrug as I meet their gazes. What is this place? Welcome to the Marchant Tavern, a home for those with the fairy tale curse. You make it sound like some kind of holiday house. Don't ruin my moment, Delora. Marchant Tavern? The Marchant was burnt, built three years ago when the number of cursed in Angiel continued to rise. The goal is to gather those affected so they might help each other break their curse. Of course, I am also here to provide help as necessary. Only the cursed and those allied with our cause can stay here. The evil and the wicked can never find this place. Most of the people here are cursed? How come those people remember who I am? Yeah. The cursed are not affected by the conditions of someone else's curse. Your condition is simple. Everyone has forgotten you were the crown princess. But because these people here are cursed, they still remember your title. It goes without saying that fairies and witches are also not affected. Come, princess, let me introduce you to a few boarders we have at the March Inn. Parfait beckons the serving girl over. This is Anise. She helps out in the March Inn and does most of the cooking. I'm sure you understand why she's working here now. Oh, because I fired her. I mean... I'm a jerk. I believe she deserves an apology. Miss Delora, what are you talking about? Don't you worry your sweet little head over it. You don't remember what this ice princess did to you. So she's not cursed, okay. Huh? I have nothing to apologize for. Clumsiness does not befit a palace maid. I only did what was necessary. Well, it's nice to meet you, princess. I'm Anise Willow. I hope we get along. Oh. Ooh. Tense. Um. Really? This is how you're gonna start doing good? Exactly. Come on, girl. I don't believe I asked for your opinion. Please, you two, no fighting. I hold my tongue as Parfait leads me to two people whose faces are incredibly familiar. They're new to me. They are faces I've seen in the palace before. This is... Jurian Valiant and Garland Belrot. Jurian. How did you know? Both of you were in the Order of Caldera. Oh. That's... That's right. They were two of Sir Alcaster's best knight. It was a big surprise when they both left a year ago. I only found out recently that it was because they acted against Sir Alcaster's orders. They were stripped of their titles and dishonorably discharged from service. What are you two doing here? We help the fairies. They and Anise are exceptions and are allowed in this tavern without the curse. Julian and Garland lend us their strength to help protect the Marchin. Protect? From the witches. They'll do anything to make sure their curses remain unbroken. And what about you? I am an exception. I like you, Delora. Also, I'm good. You keep forgetting the good part? Yeah, snark me! Remember, not all witches are evil. Your curse is a test. A test? Ori originally, the wicked were cursed so that they could learn to change. Their curses were meant to teach them a lesson. 
I'm hoping your curse will teach you a lesson too, Ice Princess. I really am only trying to help you. I don't need you to show me how to change. I just want my life back. Well, to do that, you'll have to break your curse. I love her. She's my favorite so far of everyone. Try to make some friends, princess. They might be able to help you break your curse. Oh, I'd love to hang out around and watch the princess try to be friendly. We have work to do, Delora. Fine. Try not to make any more enemies, princess. Ah, she is my favorite. Ah, I can't wait to see what else she does. The instant Parfait and Delora leave the room, the temperature drops several degrees. Now that I'm alone, I feel the cold stares return. Disgust. Contempt. As if I am the reason they are cursed and have to take refuge in the Martian in the first place. <gasps> Make friends. All I've ever had are my dolls, and no wonder you're a jerk. <laughs> I've never needed friends. I will break this curse on my own. I was told it was rude to stare. One man suddenly stands up, the anger apparent on his face. His hands clench and unclench into fists as he glares at me pointedly. Julian and Garland place themselves in front of me, shielding me from the man. You know the rules. What happened in the past stays in the past. And no one is allowed to harm anyone else in the Marchin. If you cannot comply, you are no longer welcome here. No matter. The Ice Princess will get what's coming to her. Oof. He throws one last glare my way before sitting down again. Break the rules and you'll get what's coming to you. That goes for everyone here. Jurian's tone is cold and firm. There is no doubt she means what she says. So these are the great knights of the Order of Caldera. The marching begins to settle down and everyone eventually goes back to their conversations and meals. I walk toward an empty table, realizing that I'm being deliberately ignored. I become immersed in my thoughts as I sit down. One thought, however, comes to me immediately. They hate me. They hate me somehow when I've only ever left the palace twice in my life. How did this happen? The only people who ever who treated me with any respect were Anise, Jurian, and Garland. Is it because they cannot remember who I am? Maybe being in the margin is not such a good idea. I doubt anyone here wants to help me break my curse. They'd probably rather see me suffer under its weight. Three good deeds. How am I supposed to complete three when I do not even know if I can accomplish one? May I join you? I look up and stare in shock at the beautiful lady from the toy shop. Her beauty still manages to take my breath away. Sorry if some of these voices get really inconsistent. There are a lot of characters that I'm juggling. I, like, don't even remember what I did for her voice. <laughs> what is she doing here? You... You were in the toy shop. Ah, yes. I was there picking up some items for a friend. I am humbled that you still remember me. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Miss Karma. Your name is Karma. A suitable name for someone as beautiful as me, no? You know, her character design is almost exactly the same as that guy who saved me earlier. I'm kind of wondering whether they're the same person. In which case, my voices are going to be really funny. Because they are very different. <laughs> Karma, your narcissism is going to scare the princess away. Oh. You are that magician boy. Boy. Oh, how appropriate. Boy. <laughs> Call me that one more time, and I'll ruin that pretty face of yours. <sighs> you would hit a lady? How savage. <sighs> anyway, I'm Walt Cress Cresswell. I have the Neverland curse. Ah, so he's not actually a kid. He's an adult. What about you, princess? What's your fairy tale curse? Does everyone share what their curse is? We talk about it freely in the Marchin. The whole point is helping each other break our curses, after all. Hard to do that if we keep our fairy tales quiet. 
He pauses and narrows his eyes slightly. Well, some people keep their fairy tales a secret. His eyes, he eyes Karma briefly, cocking an eyebrow. The smile never, never leaves Karma's face. Has anyone managed to break their curse? I've been told a few have. A few? That's not very reassuring. Well, at least the curses can be broken. I cannot particularly say this reassures me either. What ails you, darling? Is it your curse? You can talk to us about it. Tell us what it is. Cinderella. Oh, goodness. Cinderella. That explains the nature of your curse. Only it's been reversed, hasn't it? Riches to rags. That's one way of putting it. Karma, you're not helping. You really are better off ignoring him, princess. He mostly speaks nonsense. He... He... Oh. Oh. Princess? Parfait's voice takes me by surprise. I hadn't even noticed her entering the room again. May I speak with you? I'd like you to meet someone, though I'm sure you already know him quite well. Rod! Rod? So you really are cursed. I was the one that gave Sebi to Rod, so he still had some way to voice his opinions. He talks a lot, though, for someone who's supposedly mute. Sebi? Short for Sebastian. Cute, isn't it? It's nice to meet you, Princess. Sebi's voice changes when it greets me. The tone it uses is lower whenever it speaks for Rod. Maybe that is what Rod's voice actually sounds like? Wait, if he remembers me, does that mean... The Mermaid's Curse. What? That is my curse. Ron has been mute all this time because he is cursed. He's talking. How is he mute? Does everyone else know? Obviously. They are my family. Even the king? He knows as well. So I am the only one you never told? I didn't think you'd particularly care either way. I'm gonna do him like whispering like that. He's not wrong. Yet I cannot believe I did not know. I was left out once again. Wait, what are you doing here? I have been trying to help Rod with his curse. That is why he comes to the margin from time to time. But I don't even want... Anyway, I only came here today to confirm that you were truly cursed. I wanted to see it with my own eyes. It was a big surprise when I woke up one day and you weren't in the palace. And an even bigger surprise when I found out no one remembered you. It has been days since I was... It was days since I was cursed. I wonder... How are things in the palace? Livelier. Happier. Happier? Oh. I've never seen my family happier than they are now. I'd say it is a good thing you aren't princess anymore. I'd always thought Rod didn't really care about me regardless, but... But this is the truth? Oh god. Okay, I don't know what I'm gonna say. Um. So this is how you truly feel. So I have to be cursed for you to open up about how you truly feel? The only reason I didn't say anything earlier was because Emmeline didn't want me to. I'm happier too, now that you are gone. I don't have to pretend like, to pretend to like you anymore. <sighs> I'm gonna return to the palace now. Oh my God, I'm gone and they're all happier. I forgot to save before that choice. I hope, I hope that one wasn't a big deal. Your very existence has been erased in the palace. They've never known you. That doesn't mean they're happy without you. Even the king. Why did you bring me here? The people in the march and they... I... I shouldn't have left you alone in there. I I'm sorry. You 
know how they felt about me. What have I ever done to them? Now isn't the right time to explain. When will it ever be the right time? So many things have already happened to you. I need you to be patient, April. All right, I think I'm gonna save here for now. No, I'm gonna go just a tiny bit more and then I'm gonna save. I'm gonna just talk to Delora and then hopefully that'll lead me to a good conclusion spot. This is gonna be a really long one. <laughs> I was intending for them all to be like half an hour, but I think this has been a lot longer than that. Has the prince already left? Yes, yes he has. Princess, we'll talk about this later. For now, you must focus on breaking your curse. Did I miss something? No. Yeah, you did. You missed Rod. Right. Maybe the fairy is right. I don't think I'm ready to find out how much I made people. How I made people. Ugh. Maybe the fairy is right. I don't think I'm ready to find out how I made so many people hate me. There we go, April. You can read. <laughs> well, Parfait, I think it's time we got down to business. What should we do with her? What are you talking about now? You, of course. You've got nowhere to go, right? She is right. I think back to the days I spent on the streets and shiver. I will do anything so long as I don't have to go back there. The princess can stay at the margin with me and the rest of my boarders. <gasps> I'd almost forgotten what hope felt like. But you'll have to work in exchange for a room. I celebrated too soon. What? Magic has its limitations, just like anything else. Money doesn't appear out of thin air, not even for a fairy. The margin doesn't attract many customers since only the cursed and a few others can enter. I sell my potions here and there, but I have several hungry mouths to feed and my funds are tight. I thought fairies lived in luxury. Parfait, are you broke? Uh. Ouch. Even the ice princess can tell. And yet you still take people in? That's always been how Parfait operates. She's good-natured to a fault. I'm told suffocating beneath my debt will be what kills me. Oh no! Just like millennials and student loans. <laughs> Why don't you just leave? I assume you make enough to take care of yourself. Leave someone who's in need of help? I could never. And that, princess, is how goodness works. How goodness works? It's not as if I accept freeloaders. All my boarders help me run the march and do errands. The princess has never worked a day in her life. I doubt she'll be useful. If karma can be useful, anyone can. Hmm? I've yet to see karma be anything but useless. Oh. Princess, you're more than welcome to stay if you're willing to help out. It's the least you can do in exchange for a roof over your head and three meals a day. Oh, oh, and shoes. <laughs> she is snarktastic. I'm obsessed with Delora. Delora is my new spirit animal. Do I even have a choice? Okay, this is where we're stopping for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I'm gonna be updating weekly. Feel free to follow me on all the relevant social media linked down below. Um, yeah, and thanks so much for watching.